the IDF dealt a very painful blow to Hezbollah over the weekend while wrapping up the mission at the Shifa hospital in Gaza city and surprising Hamas at the El Amal hospital in Khan Yunis. I'm Yair Pinto and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 171 day of the war against Hamas and Hezbollah. The IDF carried out another operation in a hospital in Gaza over the weekend to the annoyance of journalists working there and much greater annoyance to the Hamas terrorists who were using the hospital as a base to carry out military operations against the IDF. This time it was the El Amal hospital inside Khan Yunis. The sweeps were the result of intelligence recently acquired by the IDF and the Shin Bet according to which the terrorists in the El Amal hospital area who are using civilian infrastructure for terrorist purposes. The Palestinian Red Crescent was also present in the hospital and Hamas was caught red-handed using their radio network for terrorist communications, so the IDF cut this communications link off. It is important to note that cutting off wireless, cellular, radio and internet communications in a combat zone is standard procedure and in accordance with international law. But before it got cut off, the Palestinian Red Crescent personnel reported that IDF soldiers had entered the hospital. Until yesterday, the IDF was clearing Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorists out of the Shifa hospital in Gaza City, arresting hundreds of terrorists and eliminating those who resisted arrest. Included in those arrested were dozens of senior operatives who were using the hospital as a base to direct terrorist operations in Judea and Samaria. Others were active in the information networks of the terrorist groups as well as rocket squads and other fighters. All of those arrested were interrogated by the Shin Bet and it's likely that the information they provided led to the operation in the El Amal hospital. Another achievement of this sweep was the elimination of the operations directorate in Hamas, Ba'ak El Mabhuch. He was hiding in a building near the hospital and fired at IDF troops who went to look for the source of the fire. When they approached his position on the fourth floor of the building, he threw grenades at them, so they returned fire, then continued to search the building. A short time later, as they were approaching the lower floors of the building, he descended the staircase and attempted to throw more grenades at the troops. They returned fire once more, and this time he was eliminated. This is an example of how the Hamas terrorists inside the hospital gave no thought about the safety of the patients and the civilians who were in the hospital as well. They took care of themselves first and mainly, like El Mabchuk, refused to surrender but chose to go down fighting. Hamas exploits civilians and the sick as a human shield. It is very important for us to get this truth out to the world and you can help us by sharing this video, subscribing to this channel and following us on social media. Speaking of media, I want to tell you a few things about the media war machine of Hamas, which includes spreading blood labels and slander against the IDF soldiers, such as stories that IDF soldiers are raping Palestinian women in Shifa hospital in the Gaza Strip. This is completely false. The mouthpieces of Hamas and the propaganda invented a new lie according to which Israeli soldiers raped women and murdered them. Of course, they don't provide any proof for this. These reports that Al Jazeera broadcast were based on a single call from an unidentified woman who says she is calling from a hospital and said these things were happening there. Let me be very clear, the Al Jazeera channel and the other mouthpieces of Hamas are unsuccessfully trying to beautify the face of ISIS Hamas after the massacre, rape and arson assault they committed against Israel in October. Hamas claims that Shifa hospital is a hospital like any hospital in the world, except 
that there is no way to hide anything from the sunlight and it became clear to everyone that the hospital has become a terrorist headquarters the terrorists of Hamas removed the mask from their hideous faces on October 7 and there should be no confusion or doubt about this anymore. On that note, I will ask you to please continue to support us. But sadly, I must also ask you to be very careful because recently fake social media accounts with my name and pictures of me have appeared asking people for money and other scams. If you want to support us financially, please do it by clicking the donate button on our YouTube channel or go to our website at www.tbn.org Israel. Now back to the news, as the IDF continues to be heavily engaged in battles with terrorists in the north of Khan Yunus in the area of El Karara, fighting on the outskirts of the southern city of Rafah has also continued in recent days. The warriors of the IDF have encountered Hamas terrorists and eliminated them in close-range fightings with the infantry, armored, and air force all heavily engaged. As usual, they also located large quantities of weapons that Hamas has stockpiled, often in residential apartments and other civilian buildings. In one such residential building, the soldiers found cluster bombs, grenades, RPG missiles, and mortar bombs stored in UNRWA bags. This is a good place to remind you that this week, a new episode of my series, My State, will be released on YouTube. It will tell the story of Purim, how the Iranians tried to wipe us out already 2,500 years ago, and what that means for us today. Speaking of Iran's threats to Israel, Israel continues to battle Hezbollah terrorists on the northern border. The Israeli Air Force attacked Hezbollah targets last night for the fourth time in Balbek, which is deep in Lebanon, at a distance of about 100 kilometers from the Israeli border. The attack came as a response to Hezbollah's attacks using a suicide drone deep inside the Israeli territory. This is seen in Israel as a red line that must not be crossed. The target that was attacked in the depths of Lebanon was a site for the production of weapons and a warehouse full of weapons. After the Israeli missiles struck, there were many secondary explosions and fires burned in the area for many hours. According to security sources, this is a very sensitive target for Hezbollah for several reasons. First, the range of action from the Israeli border is very far and the Shiite organization regards it as outside the rules of the game with Israel. Secondly, it is a humiliation for Hezbollah since they are very careful about trying to keep different aspects of the conflict separate. But the attack tonight exposes other Hezbollah weapons production sites in the region to Israeli attacks. This will force them to move these facilities to other places or conduct other attacks on the Israeli home front. And no less important, the attack deprived Hezbollah of the ability to produce weapons at a time when it is eager to increase its weapons arsenal. According to sources in the defense establishment, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah is beginning to signal distress in everything related to the scope of the weapons in his possession. For example, in one of his recent speeches, Nasrallah stated that the countries in the so-called axis of resistance should help him with money to purchase or manufacture weapons. According to Israeli intelligence estimates, Hezbollah is doing everything it can to avoid reaching red lines that would force it to engage in a larger war with Israel. This is because they are worried about not having enough ammunition and other equipment they'll need to fight this war. For all these reasons, we need your support now more than ever. We, the people of Israel, stand today as a shield against evil in the world. Therefore, any support, help, or prayer for us strengthens the people of Israel. I will conclude by addressing a question many are asking. What about the operation in Rafah? The answer is that Israel will have to advance a military operation in Rafah in order to dismantle the military capabilities 
of the terrorist organization Hamas. The organization's leadership is believed to be hiding in Rafah and keeping many of the remaining Israeli hostages near them to use them as human shields. However, an operation in Rafah is apparently not expected in the coming weeks, at least until the end of the month of Ramadan. Even then, the IDF will need some time to move the civilian population in Rafah to safe areas. In other words, the operation in Rafah will be much more precise, almost surgical, than previous battles. Please continue to spread the truth with us, share and follow us, and most importantly, continue to pray for the peace of Israel and for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.